I'm looking at the, the home ranges of wild male orangutans mm -hmm. in Bangal Peat Swamp Forest mm -hmm. here in uh, Kalimantan. I'm looking at um, yeah, how far they're moving, what they're feeding on, when they're going to different parts of the forest, um, whether the, and look at, also looking at dispersal, whether they're going, um, moving away from the area where they're born into different parts of the forest, and at, at what stage in their life they do that, whether it's when they're um, young or whether when they're uh, unflanged males, so they're, they're adult, but they're not, they, they haven't got their secondary sexual characteristics of the flanged male face, um, or whether they, um, they go actually when they are flanged and they, they've got a better chance of being dominant in a different place. Mm -hmm. So my research, I, I go and we find the orangutans, we listen for long calls, um, that's the easiest way to find them. So, well the flanged males, they're the only ones that do the long call. I try and find them like that. Um, when I find them, we follow them up for a period up to 10 days. So far I've done it for eight days, but the forest gets quite difficult after that. Um, and then we and then I'm, I'm collecting faecal samples and I'm going to different research sites as well, well different sites around, so five kilometres from camp, ten kilometres from camp, um, seven kilometres and, and areas between to try and find orangutans that I may have found in a different place, collect a sample, try and find, uh, well take a photograph as well and then, um, and then once I've got all that data and done the genetic analysis I'll be able to see whether we've got males in one area um, which is it's the same male that I found in one area as it is in another place. We know what the home ranges of females are because they're quite limited. Um, so within our grid we've got seven females and we've, we've pretty much um, mapped out the areas that their home ranges are. But the males is a much larger area and we don't know how large that area is. Um, which. For conservation purposes, that's um, it's very important because you need to know the area that a, a, a male orangutan should be living in to a, for a, a viable population. So yeah, and a pop and a size for a viable population. So I'm also looking at um, the um, the overlap of the males as well. So how many males in one area can live in one area at the same time? But there's a lot of parts of the uh, peat swamp forest which is outside the national park and. A lot of that has been sold to logging concessions or to uh, palm oil companies. Um, some of the companies are trying to work with um, conservationists to say, okay, we're going we're gonna to be making this into a, a plantation, but if we leave an area, then how large does that area need to be? So my hope is that the research that I can do here will show, okay, if you're going to leave a forest, it has to be this large to actually have a, a population size that is viable, and this area yeah, for them to all survive with the amount of fruit that they have in the forest. They're not territorial, no. So there's a lot of overlap because of the, the, the ranges that they have and the forest, because they're not a group living species like a gorilla where you can have a male who can protect his mates so he will, and he'll be the strong you know, the strongest male in that area apart from, and then if another male comes along he'll come and take the females or there'll, you know, there'll be a um, chest beating and such like. Um, with orangutans, there's no way that they can do that because they're semi-solitary. So most of the time of their lives, they're, they're by themselves. You do get um, associations with females and males, but they'll be for three days, three or four days, um, with several matings, and then they'll move off again. So you can't have any kind of territoriality in, in that respect. Within Sabangau, uh, 7,000 orangutans um, yeah, in about 5,500 uh, kilometres squared. So with the males, because we'll have males with, on the board, we've been doing this research since 2004. Um, and the males, you, you, we'll take pictures, we, we do an ID card and you'll see them for a year. Then they'll disappear and then they'll come back again. You'll see them two years later or you never see them again. And they're, they're not all dying, but you don't know when they're coming back. Um, um, yeah. So where are they going? That's the question, really. Because there's a there's a good research site here already, um, and I should be able to move through the areas. I looked at the different places, uh, different sites, and um, I can get access to quite a lot of these different places either by boat or walking out into some of these places. Um, in the, in the dry season especially, in the wet season, to try and walk 12 kilometres, it's, uh, 
It's crazy. It, I mean, it sounds very, very strange, but um, it will take you to do two kilometres in this forest. It will take you uh, an hour to walk that two kilometres. Whereas in, you know, it, in the UK or wherever you are, then it's it's much quicker to move around. So it's quite difficult. There are these aspects which are, yeah. It took a lot of logistical. Um, tinkering to uh, to get it sorted out. Yeah. So when do you expect to finish the...? Um, I finish my field work in October uh, this year and then go back to Cambridge to uh, do the write-up and I send my samples off to Zurich to uh, get the DNA analysis done, the genetic analysis.